Hello, and welcome to Here Comes the Bride, The Church Begins. It is a study of the book of Acts. I am Jim DeVore, the pastor of Cornerstone Church of Little Rock in California. So glad that you are joining us for this study. We are in Acts chapter 12, uh, beginning in verse 12, Acts chapter 12, 12. We are on devotional number 30, actually, of our study through the book of Acts. Again, Acts 12, verse 12. As we go through this study, we're simply asking a couple of questions those questions are, one, what do we learn about God and his eternal plan? Question number two is, what do we learn as God works through the church and on behalf of the church? Question number three is, what do we learn um, about the individuals that God is working through? All right, let me catch you up. In Acts chapter 12, um, Herod has killed James, uh, one of the leaders of the church, the brother of John. He has um, arrested Peter in hopes of killing him too and impressing the Jews, okay? But um, in the middle of the night, Peter is rescued from jail. So we're picking up the story um, as, as Peter realizes that he's not having a dream, but he's actually been rescued miraculously by angels and escorted out of the jail. I'm going to pick you up in verse 11, okay? When Peter came to himself, he said, now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the hand of Herod and from all that the Jewish people were expecting. The Jewish people there are the Jewish leaders, by the way. So um, the reference here is not to every single Jew, because Peter himself was a Jew. But the Jewish leaders were expecting that Peter himself would be killed. Peter says, nope, I'm quite sure now that I've been rescued by the hand of God. The reason he says that is because he thought he was dreaming up until that point. It says he was asleep. The angels woke him up. But he continually thought he was having a vision of being rescued. And then all of a sudden, the angel leaves him. He comes to, and he realizes he's outside the prison. And he realizes the vision is reality. Now, watch what happens next. When he, Peter, realized this, verse 12, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, John Mark, the writer of the Gospel of Mark. Okay, um, where many were gathered together and were praying. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to answer. Recognizing Peter's voice, in her joy, she did not open the door, the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. So let's just pause there, okay? All right. Peter goes to the house of Mary. This is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. It's Mary, the mother of John Mark. Many were gathered together and were praying. What do we think they're praying for? We're assuming they were praying for Peter's release. At least that would be part of their prayer. But maybe they were praying for their own protection and safety. So Rhoda, one of the praying girls, hears, okay, she's a servant girl. She hears a knock at the gate. Okay, so she's left the inner house, walked probably across a small patio or garden. And she hears Peter's voice at the gate. So knock, knock, knock. Rhoda says, who is it? Peter says, it's me, Peter. She recognizes Peter's voice. In her joy, she doesn't open the gate. She's been praying for the release of Peter, asking God to actually rescue him. He rescues Peter. She gets so excited that she runs back in and tells the others without letting Peter in. She leaves him at the gate. So she leaves Peter standing at the gate. They said to her, they, the people praying for the release of Peter, you are out of your mind. But she kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying, it is his angel. Like, oh my goodness, Peter has actually died, and an angel has come to tell me that Peter has passed away. They, they, that's not a theological belief or statement there, by the way, that people, that we believe that people who die become angels. This is just, again, a historical story of the book of of Acts, of the early church, of what's happening in the book of Acts, and um, the people responding, you didn't see here Peter, you heard his angel, an angel telling us that Peter's gone to heaven, probably. Okay? So again, that's why you don't take the book of Acts as doctrine. You're looking at historical events and seeing what happens and not allowing them to determine what you should believe about doctrine. Okay? But Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. So Peter's still pounding away. Hey, 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 I'm out here. I'm out here. Let me in. Let me in. I've been rescued. No, I'm not an angel. Let me in. Um, motioning to them with his hands to be silent, because now they're hollering and yelling and excited. And he's like, calm down. Be quiet. Okay, you're going to draw a crowd. We don't want a crowd yet. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, Tell these things to James and to the brothers, and he departed and went to another place. Wait a minute, I thought that James had died. Well, this is another James who is helping to lead the church. Okay, James, the brother of John, has died, but the other James now helping to lead the church. 
then Peter departed and went to another place. Now, here's an interesting thing again. Okay, let's remember, we talked about this yesterday. We're talking about it now. James, the brother of John, is killed for his faith. Peter, the apostle, James also being an apostle, Peter, the apostle, is rescued when he was supposed to be killed. So you would think that once he was rescued, he would say, hey, God's going to rescue me. Watch, he's going to rescue me again. But instead, Peter reports himself to the praying people, I've been rescued. He says, go tell James. I'm not going to James because I don't want them to find me there. They're going to have to look for me there, and I don't want James to be in trouble. And I'm not going to hang around here. I don't want you to be in trouble. So he kind of goes into hiding. Then he departed and went to another place. He didn't want to draw attention, draw a crowd, draw more trouble. He didn't presume upon the goodness and grace of God that if he were found again, he'd be rescued again. He's wisely going into hiding and hoping this will all settle down. Verse 18. Now when day came, so this is all in the middle of the night, when day came, the day he's supposed to be brought out, before the, all the Jewish people and killed, okay? When day came, there was no little disturbance. I love Luke here. There's no little disturbance among the soldiers over what had become of Peter. They've been showing up looking for Peter, and they're asking all the guards along the way, where's Peter? Oh, he's in, he's in the jail. He's in the jail. He's in the jail. They get there. They find two sleeping guards and no Peter. Wake them up. Where's Peter? Well, I don't know. Where'd he go? Okay? After Herod searched for him and did not find him, okay, so they didn't find him, uh, he examined the sentries in order that they should be put to death. Why? Because sentries who lose prisoners are considered to be corrupt and not helpful and trustworthy for Rome, and they're killed. That's, they have to guard these, guard these prisoners for fear of their own death. And unfortunately for these men, the miraculous recovery of Peter and rescue of Peter becomes their own death. Then he went down from Judea to Caesarea and spent time there. He is, again, now we're back to Peter. He went down to Judea, then he goes over to Caesarea. He's basically hiding out from Herod, spends time there. All right. Let's just kind of uh, wrap this up, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at the next segment. The death of Herod is coming up next, but I think we're going to hold on to that. Now let's go ahead. We're in good shape. Let's go for this. Now Herod was angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon, and they came to him with one accord, and having persuaded Blastus, the king's chamberlain, they asked for peace because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. Okay, first of all, what's, what's happening here is now Luke is going to back up and give historical context to an event that takes place during Herod's reign. The term king does not mean that he's king of all Rome. He's king of the area of Judea which is going to include Tyre and Sidon. Okay, he's king over that. Apparently those people are not happy with him. Okay, they, they, he's not treating them well, and they want to change that. Okay, so King's Chamberlain, um, Blastus the King's Chamberlain, they persuaded this Blastus guy. Okay, he's the trusted personal attendant of the king. So they persuaded the trusted personal attendant to let the king give them audience. They came to the king and asked for peace because their country depended on the king's country for food. They needed some help. They needed the king and ruler of Judea to show favor and peace to the countries of Tyre and Sidon so that food could get from Judea or from the coast through Judea to them. Okay? All right. So, um, so on an appointed day, Herod put on his royal robes, took his seat upon the throne, and delivered an oration to them. So... The, the people are there. They're making the request. The king makes an oration to them. He gives a, a large speech, a very kind of probably flowing speech and statement, probably even offering to help them. Okay. Um, and the people were shouting the voice of a God and not of man. So they are literally uh, flattering Herod. They're flattering him. They're, they're doing anything they can to get, win his good favor so he'll show favor on them so they can get food. Okay. The voice of a God and not a man. What are they saying? They're saying, Herod, you are God. Okay. Immediately, an angel of the Lord struck him, Herod, down because he did not give God the glory and he was eaten by worms and breathed his last. That's what you call a blasphemous statement. Okay. He was called to be God. He did not deny that. He received worship and praise as a God. If you receive worship and praise as a God and you're not a God, you're blaspheming the true God, and the penalty is death. And God took care of it here. He was literally eaten 
by worms, and he breathed his last. Ugh. That who knows how long that took, but it doesn't appear that it took very long. So we have the death of Herod. He tried. He killed James. Tried to kill Peter. Trying to impress the Jews. Trying to get people to call him a god. God has enough of them and says, "You're done. Your reign is quickly and sadly ended. Because you won't acknowledge me as the true God. You're out against my people. You are killing my leaders. You're." You are against my believers. You're receiving praise as if you were God. We're done. No more of that. But while Herod's demise comes quickly, what happens to the church of God, the true church of God? Verse 24, but the word of God increased and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had completed their service, bringing with them John, whose other name was Mark. This is the John Mark we read about a few moments ago. The house where Rhoda and everybody was gathered praying for Peter. So as we take a look at all of this, what do we just learn quickly from this story of Herod? Well, it's really pretty obvious. And this is our third level here. What do we see God doing working in individuals that are mentioned in the book of Acts? In this case, in Herod's case, it's a reminder. Do not receive worship and praise as a God. Do not fight against God. Do not fight against God's people. Not a good idea. There will come a time when you may find yourself fighting against, you're fighting against very God himself. And you may end up having that fight face to face and you're going to lose. There will come a time that God may simply say, I'm done with you. And so instead of fighting against God, come alongside and submit to God. And then God will cause his church to grow despite persecution. He'll cause his church to grow even if there is loss to the leaders, if they're killed, if they're martyred, he will cause his church to grow. And then we've got a little tidbit here, kind of like a cleaning house thing as, as what um. What Luke is telling us now at this point is he's going to get Paul and Barnabas back from Jerusalem. They started in Antioch. They went down to Jerusalem. At the end of chapter 12, he's going to get them back to Antioch. Why? Well, because a very big event is about to start. But you'll have to wait till our next devotional. Here comes the bride. The church begins our study of the book of Acts. Thanks so much for joining us.